If you've ever done any of your own retirement planning or even worked with a financial advisor, you might be familiar with a Monte Carlo simulation. That's that little probability of success score that you get that tells you how likely your plan is to work out over your lifetime. And while Monte Carlo simulations do have their place in financial planning, I think when it comes to retirement, they can lead to a lot of stress and anxiety when what you really need is clarity. And if you've never heard of a Monte Carlo simulation, we're gonna discuss that in this video. We'll explain exactly what is meant by probability of success or failure. And finally, a more modern approach that I use with my clients as a financial planner that I've found gives retirees a lot of peace of mind because they know exactly when to make adjustments to their plan. Before we get started, if we haven't met yet, my name is Jake Skelhorn. I'm a certified financial planner and the co-founder of Spark Wealth Advisors. My channel and my firm are both dedicated to giving people just like you more confidence with their money. So what is a Monte Carlo simulation anyway? It's basically a really fancy calculator that takes a multitude of different inputs, including your age, your current balances, how those balances are invested, when you plan to retire, what you plan to spend in retirement, things like that. And it basically simulates 1000 different scenarios of what could happen between now and the end of your life, which is also something that you put into the software for a life expectancy. But unlike a regular calculator, a Monte Carlo simulation will have 1000 different results as opposed to typing in two plus two equals four, for example. And the reason for that is we don't exactly know how your investments are gonna perform over the next 20, 30, 40 years, but a Monte Carlo simulation will use historical market data to project out different scenarios of what could happen, again, based on your inputs. So with those 1,000 different scenarios and 1,000 different end results, the Monte Carlo will produce a probability of success score. And this probability of success figure is basically what percentage of those simulations results in you reaching the end of your life without running out of money. And this is where a Monte Carlo simulation can start to be a little misleading. So let's say, for example, you put into your software that you want to be able to spend $60,000 per year or $5,000 per month. Well, if you reach your final years and you're only able to spend, say, $4,500 a month because that's all you have left in your accounts, the Monte Carlo simulation would have considered that a failure when in reality, any normal person would have just adjusted their spending because they knew that they were gonna run out. So a better way to communicate it, in my opinion, is not a probability of success, but a probability of adjustment on the other side of that equation. So if you have an 80% probability of success score, that means you have a 20% chance that you're gonna to have to adjust something in your retirement, which in most cases is an adjustment in spending so that you don't run out of money. But what's most important when it comes to retirees using a Monte Carlo score is that it doesn't really tell you when you need to make adjustments. For example, if you start your retirement with an 80% probability of success score and your portfolio takes a dive early in retirement, your probability of success score is probably gonna go down because those simulations are now basing the next 30 years on your current balances. So let's go through two examples really quick. One in our software showing a probability of success score and another one using a guardrails approach that shows you exactly when to make adjustments in spending. All right, so in this example, we're gonna use a single client named Andy. He's 62 years old today. He wants to retire basically as soon as possible at 62. He plans to spend about $5,000 per month in retirement. We'll also include healthcare costs and long-term care costs, which would be about $68,000 for the last two years of his life. Um, his current investments are allocated about 60-40. So 60% stocks, 40% bonds. We're gonna keep it really simple for this example. And then as far as the total amount that he has saved, we're gonna assume that he has about $1.75 million between a brokerage account, 350,000, a pre-tax 401k, 1.2 million, and $200,000 in a Roth IRA. So with those inputs, we can see the likelihood that Andy will have enough money to last the rest of his life, which is age 92 in this situation. So as you can see, the probability of success is 80%. Once again, that means 80% of those scenarios result in Andy reaching his final year with at least $1 or more left in his accounts. 20% of those simulations end with him running out of money before he reaches age 92. So if Andy were to retire today, he'd probably think he's in a pretty good spot. Again, only 20% chance that he's gonna have to adjust spending at some point in retirement. But the problem with this number is that, again, it changes over time depending on how your balances are performing, depending on what the stock markets do, et cetera. And it doesn't really lay out any groundwork for when to make adjustments. So another tool that we have in our tool belt here is to be able to do a stress test. So we can play with all these different factors and see you know, what happens to his probability of, of success if our expectations are basically not in line with reality. So the one I wanted to point out to you here was a market drop at retirement. So let's say as soon as Andy retires, which is this year, age 62, the equity markets drop by 
Well, all of a sudden his probability of success is now at 61% and Andy's starting to panic. He's wondering if he should cut back spending, if he should go to all cash, if he should sell out of all his investments. So this is where the probability of success score starts to cause undue stress and anxiety because it doesn't tell you what needs to happen to bring that back up to 80% or to a number that's gonna make sure this money lasts the rest of his life. And obviously the stock market isn't the only thing that we can't predict. There's other things like taxes. So what if taxes are 20% higher than we expect? What if social security gets cut by 30%? What if you live longer than you expect? This is a great stress test to show, you know, what your probability of success drops to um, in the event that we are wrong with our expectations and our inputs. But nonetheless, uh, again, the point here is that there's no plan for what to do when that probability of success number starts to drop and when your portfolio starts to drop in retirement. So, and the other thing with a Monte Carlo simulation is that it doesn't really tell you if you can start spending more money if your portfolio is doing much better than expected, right? So it's not just what to do if the market crashes. It fails to address what you can do if your portfolio is going down one of those paths where you might end up with more money than you even started retirement with. So out of those thousand simulations, again, this would be like the best case scenario at the top here. And that's where Andy would be you know, on his deathbed, essentially with $3.4 million in the bank. Um, so it doesn't really tell you that you can start to spend more money in these earlier years if you're going down one of these paths. So the alternative tool that I like to use for clients who are in retirement um, is known as retirement income guardrails. So using all the same inputs here, you can see that he has a $1.75 million portfolio, still invested at a 60-40. He's 62, plans to live until age 92. It gives you basically a clear cut spending capacity that you can spend each month. And this is after taxes, as well as your upper and lower guardrails, which tell you when you can adjust spending or when you need to adjust spending on the downside to both preserve your portfolio, as well as make sure you're getting the most out of it and not leaving a bunch of money left unspent. So to take a closer look, we can see his current balance over here on the left. And if he were to experience a 26% decline in his portfolio, then he would need to make a small adjustment in spending to basically preserve his portfolio and make sure it does last the rest of his life. Now, what's important to note is that this software actually still does use a Monte Carlo simulation in the background. So that knows that, you know, if he experienced a 26% decline in his portfolio and he is now working with about 1.3 million, then he could really only sustainably withdraw about $8,700 over the rest of his life uh, without running out of money. So it still uses that simulation uh, and you can do, use, actually use different settings here as well. So if you want to spend more today, but understand that there's a higher likelihood that you're going to have to adjust your spending. You can be more aggressive. If you'd rather spend less, but have a lower chance of, you know, taking a pay cut, you can be more conservative. So um, once again, this starting point in the middle here is about an 80% probability of success. But uh, the point is that there's clearly defined sort of parameters for when to make those adjustments. And I find that it really provides a lot of peace of mind for retirees knowing that they're going to be okay if and when the market drops throughout their retirement. So, and something else that provides a lot of clarity is actually running a stress test. So this tool also offers the ability to take these exact inputs, go back in time and show you how Andy's plan would have worked out during various uh, market crashes like the 08 financial crisis, the dot-com bubble. Uh, again, various different periods of time where the markets were very volatile. So if Andy were to retire just before the financial crisis in 2007, you can see on the bottom graph there, he has his $1.75 million balance, his planned income, which is that starting amount that $9,400 that's pre-tax on the other screen, it was a uh, net of tax about that $8,500 number. But um, we can basically simulate what his portfolio would have done. Uh, and obviously, when the market crash happened, he would have hit that lower guardrail. So he would have had to adjust his spending. And again, the idea here with the guardrails is that when you make that adjustment in spending, you have to do it with the expectation that that is the most that you can spend for the rest of your life. Obviously, new guardrails will sort of be generated. As you can see in the, the bottom graph here, they do fluctuate with uh, the market and based on what the, the simulations are saying. But over time, obviously, markets did recover. Even with him spending that um, $87 a month or so, um, he did eventually hit an upper guardrail is able to increase that spending again to prevent him reaching the end of his life with regret that he didn't spend more money. Um, so again, really cool tool to be able to see what would have happened uh, in various market crashes and um, ultimately when adjustments need to be made. Again, that's the theme here, having a plan for when to make adjustments to get the most out of your nest egg, but, but also not run out of money uh, at any point in your, in your life. And one other thing I meant to mention earlier on this screen, you'll notice that the spending capacity might seem pretty high compared to traditional spending rules like the 4% rule. 
Um, $9,400 per month, again, gross of taxes comes out to about $113,000 per year, which is about a 6.4% withdrawal rate. Um, and the reason that that is so high is because we know that he's going to be claiming Social Security you know, at age 67. So it's okay to have a higher withdrawal rate for a few years, understanding that some of that will be replaced by Social Security and he'll need less from his portfolio later on. Um, also, you might notice that this sort of declines over time. This is known as the retirement spending smile. Basically, it's been shown that retirees spend less money throughout retirement as, as the years go on, on an inflation adjusted basis. So this ultimately allows you to spend more money in those early years. And then uh, again, if you're wondering what the spike is, that's the last two years of long term care that we include in his plan. So again, just want to show another sort of pitfall of traditional planning uh, software and, and Monte Carlo simulations. It doesn't really show you that you can spend more money in those early years. Um, when you have, you know, future cash flows expected to kick in like Social Security. So again, just to compare this to the 4% rule really quick, um, based on $1.75 million, you'd only be able to spend about $5,800. And yes, that would increase when your Social Security kicks in, but most people would prefer to spend that more of that money earlier in their retirement as opposed to later on. So that's really what the goal of this strategy is to maximize your income when you when you can use it the most. So I hope that gives you something to think about if you're someone who uses a traditional probability of success score for your own retirement planning. And if you are considering working with a financial advisor to get the most out of your retirement, I would love to speak with you. I will give you a free retirement assessment so you can make an informed decision on whether or not you would like to work together. You can schedule that in the link below this video. Besides that, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for joining.